Hey freaks, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is JJ. I am both an author and a metalhead, and here on my channel I discuss the stories behind concept albums. So uh, today we will be discussing The Price Fighter Inferno, which is a highly, highly requested album. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry it's taking me so long to do this video, but I just recently got the uh, comics in the mail, so um, yeah, I just recently read them. I ordered, um, except for the first issue, I ordered like the like special edition ones from Revolver Magazine and they took forever to ship so finally got them so i'm finally getting to do this video uh but yeah i'm really excited to be talking about this comic and this album because we actually have a horror story that goes behind this album i know you never guessed from just like listening to the album but it's actually a pretty gory uh story that goes behind it so um it's just in time for halloween so if you guys want to pick up the comics i will link down in the description where you can get them from the evil ink website i highly suggest you buy them um they're really inexpensive um and yeah it's a perfect time to read it for october um and yeah this isn't like a sponsored thing i'm just saying this because i really actually enjoy them um, anyway, uh, in case you don't know, Price Fighter Inferno is the solo project um, by Claudio Sanchez. Um, of course, Claudio being the genius behind the band Coheed and Cambria. So, uh, I'll be covering the story behind his 2006 album, My Brother's Blood Machine. And I'm sorry I'm moving around so much. She's, she's trying to get her to stay asleep. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm talking really fast too. I'm also trying to get this in before she wakes up. Um, so if you need to, go ahead and like slow the video down. There's like a little button down at the corner there. You can slow it down if I'm talking too fast. But this is actually just kind of how I normally talk also. Anyway, I know you guys really prefer it when I go track by track as far as um, for my like uh, concept explanations. Um, but it is sometimes really hard to go track by track um, because not all of the songs clearly relate to a part in the story or it's not or it's a little bit ambiguous or, you know, it's not very clear exactly how each song relates to the story. But also what makes it a little bit more complicated even further is we kind of have two different storylines for this this album. So way back in 2006, um, Claudio supposedly did an interview with MTV News where he explained the story behind My, Blood, My Brother's Blood Machine. Um, I say supposedly because I found this information on Wikipedia and I tried really hard to find that original interview, um, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So, you know, you can only trust so much what you read on Wikipedia. Um, but yeah, if you happen to know where that interview is, where he explains the storyline of this album back in 2006 when he released it, then please drop that in the comments. Um, but we're going to kind of assume that, that that interview is correct and exists in real life. The story outlined in the that interview differs greatly from the uh, story that we get in these comics here. But you know, I completely understand, especially like as an author, I know that a lot of the time you need to change a lot of big plot points to better serve the story. And so, you know, I, I totally understand why he's changed a lot of it. Also, he released this album like 17 years ago, so of course you're going to change some things during that time period when you go back and rewrite the story for it. Um, anyway, in Claudio's interview, he uh, explains how the story relates to the Amory Wars, um, and he says this, um, the story actually acts as a prequel to the Amory Wars. Inferno dies in Good Apollo Volume 1 and is resurrected in present day Earth. So he leaves the solar system that the story takes place in and gets resurrected in the present day, but before he can tell the story of the Amory Wars, he needs to tell the story of the Blood Machine. So, um, if you're not familiar with the Amory Wars of Coed and Cambria, I covered all the albums and, you know, give a quick story explanation. I'll link that playlist up here and at the end of this video if you want to check those out. Uh, anyway, this is, again, like I said, my personal interpretation of the story, and I sort of filled in the gaps in how each song relates to the greater concept. I also really, really love the uh, tarot cards that came with the album, so I will be assigning a tarot card to each of the characters or set of characters in this storyline. Um, and yeah, I, I will admit that I have a very, like, surface level knowledge of tarot cards like at best like i honestly did like a few minutes google research on the meaning of these tarot cards so if you are an expert on tarot cards i would love to know more please drop some knowledge down in the comments about them but anyway yeah enough of the housekeeping stuff let's get started with this horror comic Before we get started with this content, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Also, feel free to join my Metalhead community. Link is down in the description. Um, it's absolutely free and you get access to bonus content and all some other good stuff like that. And if you super, super want to support me, um, I have my debut dark fantasy novel coming out on November 14th. Uh, Pre-order links will be down in the description. Uh, yeah, it's a story with a lot of blood and gore and monsters, um, steampunk weapons, and yeah, it's it's kind of a cross between fantasy and horror. So if you like any of those things, go check it out. Um, and yeah, sorry for the self-promo, but you know, girls gotta hustle these days. Uh, anyway, 
some background on, you know, where we're setting up the story for this uh, concept. Uh, it takes place in 1968 in a small town of Margaretville. I'm sorry if I end up saying Margaritaville at some point in this video because I keep wanting to say Margaritaville, but it's Margaretville. Um, anyway, this town of Margaretville has been rocked by a series of disappearances and their prime suspect is a teenage boy named Gunner Recall, but the charges against him have been dropped as they don't have enough evidence to charge him. Our uh, main character is a teenage girl named Cecilia. She lives with her mother, her twin half-brothers, and her stepfather. So the story starts the day before this annual Margaretville Jubilee. And so uh, Cecilia meets up with her boyfriend, Glenn, and he gifts her this gold locket uh, that he picked up from a pawn shop. And after he gives it to her, they open it and they discover this creepy photo on the inside. Uh, but that's just some foreshadowing for a little bit later in the story. So we start off with track one, uh, the going price for home. So this one, uh, I believe is told from Arthur McLeod's perspective. So Arthur McLeod, um, is in love with his teenage stepdaughter, Cecilia, Cecilia being the protagonist of this story. So, uh, yeah, pretty gross. Uh, over the years, he has been secretly sneaking into her room to rape her. Um, and so, uh, Cecilia has never told anyone about this. She's too afraid and too ashamed to tell anyone. And so this has been going on for a while. And her mother, Martha, has no idea that any of this is happening. Although she really should, because, um, at one point she even catches Arthur trying to pick the lock into Cecilia's room at night. And if that doesn't ping all kinds of red flags and make you start asking all kinds of questions. I don't know what does, but anyway, Martha's pretty aloof and she has no idea what's been going on. Anyway, so this song I think serves as just a really twisted love song from Arthur to Cecilia. Next up, we have track two, The Fight of Moses Early and Sir Arthur McLeod. So Arthur McLeod, like I mentioned, is Cecilia's stepfather and he owns this mechanic repair shop. And Moses is a family friend and he's been working for Arthur at the mechanic shop for about 15 years. And so one day they get into a big argument because uh, Arthur believes that uh, Moses has stolen something from one of the cars he was working on. Um, but Moses only thinks that he's accusing him because he is black. And so Moses quits and storms out in a rage. Um, but Moses is definitely one of the good guy characters in the story and he tries to help Cecilia out But I really see Moses as sort of this wise mentor character Which is why I have assigned him the hermit tarot card uh, Because he definitely tries to help our protagonist out and I think he offers a lot of good advice and backstory to what's been going on in this town Next up we have track three our darling daughter you are little Cecilia Marie And so like I said Cecilia is being molested by her stepfather um, And she wants to run away, but she's afraid of leaving behind her two little brothers so that's why she has stayed for so long but eventually one night she has had enough she escapes her stepfather and climbs out her window and runs away so she goes and meets up with her boyfriend glenn and together they decide to run away together so here in this scene i believe cecilia's character is represented by the strength tarot card in that she is able to escape the abuse of her stepfather so a little bit more of the storyline before I get into the next track. Um, to get out of town, Cecilia and Glenn must cross through the Anderback Woods. Um, and in the dark thick of the forest, they end up getting captured by this pair of demented brothers. And so the, the brothers are the Bleem brothers named Longarm and Butchie. And they drag the pair back to their underground lair. They murder Glenn and they feed his body to the blood machine. And so this blood machine is this really nasty um, machine that desecrates bodies and the chops them up into little pieces. Then it's kind of like a cross between an Iron Maiden and a wood chipper. And so here I think Glenn's character is represented by the hangman card in that he is a sacrifice to the blood machine, which I'll explain in a second. Uh, track four, A Death in the Family. So uh, throughout the comics, we kind of get flash some flashbacks to uh, the Butchie and Longarm backstory and how they became the way that they are. So um, the Bleem brothers were born in this creepy old uh, farmhouse on the edge of town. Their mother was mentally ill and extremely obsessed with the occult. And so she was practicing all kinds of satanic rituals and meddling with black magic and demon summoning. And so when she got pregnant, she believed that her unborn sons were actually the spawn of Satan. And when the brothers were born, they came out horribly, horribly disfigured. What's worse is that their mother would then go on to perform all kinds of macabre operations on them. She'd cut them up and install these weird metal contraptions into their body and their mother later went on to bury them in a hole and lock them away. Uh, but despite everything that their mother did to them, uh, it seems that the Bleem brothers still loved her very much. So the comics never actually say what happened to their mother, but I think it's safe to assume that she is dead. Um, and I think that the title of this track, A Death in the Family, is uh, referring to their mother. 
So going back to the main storyline, Cecilia is about to be fed to this blood machine, but Longarm sees the locket around her neck that Glenn got her from the thrift store, and he recognizes it as his mother's locket. And so while Butchie is distracted, Longarm decides to set her free. And so she escapes, but as soon as Butchie realizes she is gone, the pair go and chase after her. So Butchie is definitely the leader of the pair, while Longarm is like the uh, mechanical genius and the muscle of the pair. And so Longarm's going to do whatever Butchie says, and so they go and chase after her. So that takes us to track five, the Margaretville dance. And so everyone is gathered for the annual Margaretville Jubilee, um, and here Arthur McLeod is being honored as Man of the Year, so he's standing on the podium about to give his speech when Cecilia shows up and crashes the party by arriving covered in blood and dirt, walks upon the podium, steals the microphone, and tells everyone in the town what Arthur has been doing to her at night. And so as she's waiting for the crowd to respond, Butchie and Longarm show up and they begin to absolutely massacre everyone in sight, um, including Arthur McLeod. And so it's a really awesome, very gory um, set of pages full of just blood and gore and Arthur McLeod getting what he deserves. Um, anyway, here I believe that Arthur is represented by the death card in that um, when he is killed by Butchie and Longarm, it finally puts an end to Cecilia's suffering once and for all. Next up, we have track six, Accidents. Um, and so my interpretation of this song is that this is about the brothers' backstory. The pair were cast out by society because they look so scary and monstrous. And eventually they began making tunnels. And one of these tunnels led to a church. And they observed this preacher collecting money from the church. And people were giving this money so that their prayers would be answered by God. And so uh, the brothers discovered what it means to sacrifice to God. And so growing up in this weird satanic household with their deranged mother, they took this to mean that... Um, um, you know, if they wanted to get what they want from God, who they've believed has abandoned them because they're all, you know, deformed and everything, they need to perform these sacrifices to God so that they can earn his forgiveness and he will heal their bodies. Um, and so what do they do? But they build this blood machine that will separate the human body from the soul and send the soul up to God as a sacrifice. So that is the whole purpose of this blood machine. It is to sacrifice to God in the hopes that they will win God's forgiveness to then heal them and make them look normal. And I will note that like the lyrics of this song, I think dive a little bit deeper into the uh, like hypocrisy of the church and, you know, it tells some tales of evil doings that go on within it. And so uh, that's just my interpretation. But uh, yeah, I think here the devil tarot card uh, represents not Longarm and Butchie who have their own tarot card, um, but I think the devil card represents the town as a whole who has rejected them because of their scary appearances, and the town has all these deep dark secrets which I'll get into a little bit more in a second. Um, but next up we have track 7, Run, Gunner, Recall, Run, The Town Wants You Dead, and this is my favorite favorite track on the whole album. I love this song. Um, Anyway, like I mentioned uh, earlier in this video, Gunner Recall is like the prime suspect for all these murders. Um, and he's this teenage boy who's a little bit strange and a little bit of an outcast. His story is that he was camped out in the woods when he stumbled upon one of the soon-to-be victims of the Blaine brothers. He met him briefly right before Butchie and Longarm murdered him. And uh, Gunner was able to escape and then he went and told the police what happened. But of course the police didn't believe that there was a set of monstrous looking people in the forest killing people. And so he became their prime suspect. Uh, and so after Cecilia escapes the massacre at the Jubilee, she runs and seeks out Moses. And so Moses tries to help her a little bit, but Longarm and Butchie then arrive and kill Moses. And so Cecilia is then on the run again, and she ends up running into Gunner Recall. And so together they make a plan to kill the brothers and destroy their horrible machine. And that takes us to track eight, Who Watches the Watchmen? So this one was kind of hard to connect to the story, but if you want my theory on it, I believe it goes into talking a little bit more about the hypocrisy of the people within the town. So the Blaine brothers have been burrowing tunnels beneath the town for years and years. And I think these tunnels have allowed them to spy on the residents of Margaretville and learn all their deep, dark secrets and all the skeletons in their closet. And so what they see are all these people who present themselves one way, um, but when no one is looking, they commit these evil acts. Um, you know, like Arthur McCloud, for example, he is the town hero, everyone loves him, but of course he has been molesting his stepdaughter. And if we're running with my theories on, you know, the preacher in the corrupt church that I mentioned in an earlier track, I think that kind of reinforces this idea of what the Bloom brothers think the town is like. So the residents are full of corruption, including Wayne Andrews, who I'll discuss in this next track, but that just kind of feeds into the psyche of the brothers and how they think that they are 
doing something for the greater good. You know, they're kind of cleaning house if everyone in the town is corrupt. And of course, every villain sees himself as a hero, which of course these brothers believe that they are the hero of their own story. And on to track nine, Wayne Andrews, the old beekeeper. And so, like I said at the beginning of this story, uh, you know, these disappearances have been going on for a while. Um, of course, these uh, disappearances are victims of the Blaine brothers, and uh, Wayne Andrews is definitely one of these victims. Now, the comic doesn't give Wayne Andrews much of a spotlight. It just shows him as one of the victims of the Blaine brothers. Uh, but I think this song goes on to give him sort of a backstory. Um, and so my interpretation is that this song is a love song about um, this woman that Wayne Andrews was in love with, but who he ended up murdering because she didn't return his love. So here I think Wayne Andrews is represented by the justice card and that he got what he deserved, that being a bloody end for having murdered his love interest. Anyway, back to the main story. Uh, so we have Cecilia and Gunner going back into the woods armed with a bunch of gas cans and they enter the brother's lair and just douse everything in sight with the gas, including the blood machine. Um, but right before they set it on fire, the Bling brothers arrive and they start attacking and they kill Gunner. And right at the last second, Cecilia lights the fire and the blood machine and the brothers all go up in flames in this big, huge explosion, which she is able to escape just barely. Um, and that takes us to track 10, the missing McLeod brothers. So this is sort of like the epilogue of the story. Cecilia returns home and kind of reconciles with her mother. Um, and it seems all happy ending. You know, we destroyed the villains and the hero survives. However, when they go back inside, they find their babysitter has been brutally murdered and her twin little brothers are missing. And on to track 11, Easter. So this one was pretty difficult to figure out how this all fits into this storyline. Um... But I believe it is a flashback to happier days with Cecilia as a child. At first, I wasn't sure whose point of view this song would be from, but I kind of have a fun theory, so run with me on this. Uh, Cecilia's real father is not mentioned anywhere in the comics, so we don't know who he is or what happened to him. But if we go with the idea that Inferno is telling this story, then I think maybe Inferno is Cecilia's real father, and he is reflecting on times past when he was happy and she was a little kid on Easter. Um, and so, yeah, that's not really based on anything other than, um, you know, I think it makes a cool theory. And I think the lyrics of this song are a little bit too sweet to be from Arthur McLeod's perspective. And so in this way, I think Inferno represents the sun card and that he is reflecting on these happy memories of the past. And on to our 12th and final track, 78. Um, honestly, I had no clue how this fit into the concept. Um, the only thing that I could think of is that, you know, there are 78 planets in Heaven's Fence, you know, which then links this whole thing to the Amory Wars. So I was like, okay, well, if this song is linked to the Amory Wars, then it has to have something to do with Inferno. So, uh, my theory is that, um, this is, again, another track from Inferno's perspective, and uh, he has just finished telling the story of the blood machine, and he is kind of pointing out the moral theme of, of the whole story, that being, you know, evil hidden beneath the surface, and what truly makes a monster a monster. <coughs> So there you have it. That is my personal interpretation of the story behind my brother's blood machine. Um, let me know what you think, you know, down in the comments, if you have differing theories or if you interpreted the songs and the story a little bit differently. Also, let me know if you've read the comics and what you thought of them. If you want to know more about the Amory Wars, I covered all of the albums and the story behind them. I'll put that in a playlist here. Um, also, if you are just into Coheed and Cambria and you want to see my playlist of further Coheed and Cambria fangirl videos, then I'll put a playlist here. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, join my metalhead community, and buy my book. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time.